you tell us what brings you here? Um, well, I came last year to have treatment um, for moods, basically. Yeah, uh, hormonal issues that affect my mood. Also, tell me what these hormonal issues are. Uh, they thought I had polycystic egg or something. Okay, and there's two different kinds of <coughs> meaning you you are producing uh, you have more androgenic exactly oh, yes okay. it's not really acne and yes. um, okay all right exactly. and the mood issues can you define those a little bit um, I would get very low moods where you know I get quite depressed, depressed. and then I also get really angry as well okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a depressed, angry fucker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm working on it though. It's okay. um, and all right. So from the history, there's two things that come, and then we have to find out. No. We still don't have a symptom. She's coming because she says it's the moods, but then maybe they're better. So we'll find out in a second. So was, I'm, I'm doing two things at the yeah, same time. Fine, yeah. Talking to you and talking to them. Kind of, Absolutely fine. Kind of some of the things. Yeah. So. From the medical history, we can the thing that comes up there's an immune issue. She has all these allergies. She has all this throat stuff, you know. So there's interesting stuff, you know, from an immune perspective. There is the part. There, there is an androgen, you know. There's there's apparently not enough estrogen, too much uh, testosterone, mm -hmm. you know, according to official count or something. Um, and what were the were there any besides the that, acne any other symptom? Um, I said, I put on a lot of weight and then okay. I think moods is related to that. Can um, be. Yes. And excess hair, facial hair. Okay. Well, you shaved very well apparently. Because <laughs> so, I don't see any. I'm so blonde, so I'm yeah. So, so, yeah. <laughs> it's not fair. Yeah. You know, like all the patients who come to you and say, "Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't shave my legs to I'm like, Really? <laughs> you think you need to? It's like, that's nice, but not for me. <laughs> Thank you. you. You can do whatever you want with. Um, so, all right. Um, and so what are the symptoms right now? Um, I've got a bit of hay fever, but I mean, acne. I still have acne at the age of 40. That's the okay. thing that When did the acne start? Uh, when I was 16, and it hasn't stopped. Yet. When did your periods start? 14, 15? 14, 15. So it took a year or two before the acne developed. I think so. And what are your periods like? Um, they used to be quite um, heavy, but now they're much better. I'm heavy on one day and I have discomfort, but I don't have a lot of pain. Okay, so no pain, not, generally I'm, speaking. Not I mean, a lot I'm, of pain. Yeah. Okay, but there used to be a lot of pain? Yes, when I was younger. Yeah. Okay. And are they regular? Yes, very regular. Okay. Uh, any children? No. Okay. And have you tried it all, or so you don't know if? Okay. Just okay. okay. Um, all right. So hay fever. Mm -hmm. Any throat issues in your? Currently. Currently or recently? Or? Um, no, not really. Okay. Sometimes get a bit of a <clears throat> bit of a cough, but okay. I haven't had one recently. And moods? How are the moods? Uh, okay. Um, before my period, uh, I got quite depressed, um, and I had bad dreams as well, which woke me up. So before the period, you tend yeah, to have the day before, yeah. Oh, the day before. Yeah. And when does it? How for how long? Uh, a day or two days. Are we talking about the dreams or the moods? Both. Okay. All right. Let's put your face up. Okay. Do you want to uh, take this off? If you don't mind. Yeah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> you can put it on the chair. Okay, thank you. Yes. I thought you. Yeah, you, you said yeah. yeah, yeah. So that puts her very clearly in an immune category. Yeah. But as that was an, actually as an adult, I had lots of problems with my tonsils before we took them out. Okay. So. Maybe could I, could I ask? Uh, were you saying that allergies are part of immune? Yes. Okay. Um, that generally makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you have oh. a list? Yeah. Okay. And did you take it out because it was got infected? Because I thought I was a bit old. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's where you keep it in. To, to make, to, 
feel like you're younger. <laughs> Do you know what your blood pressure is? Quite low. Like how low? I don't know. Oh, you don't know the numbers. No, no. She doesn't have like a clear pulse, it's not an open nervous system pulse. It's not like, it doesn't have that sharpness to it, but it, it's quite, it's a, quite a weak and, and thin pulse. So. Okay. Feel the cold. It feels cold to you? I, I always feel cold. Okay. Yeah. Not too bad. Um, you know, I mean, it's not icy. So, but you are, you, it tends to be clammy, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So clammy, so one of the signs of autonomic nervous system types is clamminess. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yes, with um, hormonal types, you can expect cold feet because there's a constriction of blood vessels with hormonal types. Any discomfort here? Um, not currently, but I have had in my left foot, yeah. What have you had in your left foot? Um, discomfort. A couple of years ago, when I was very overweight, I had pain in my feet in general. Oh, wow. Sorry. You were very overweight. When you, because of the hormonal stuff, you gained weight. How did you lose the weight? Um, yoga, running, and diet. Okay. I went on an anti-inflammatory diet. Anti-inflammatory means... I uh, cut out um, gluten, dairy, sugar, um, nightshades, bananas, coffee, eggs, uh, nuts. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what else. Okay. And then slowly we introduced them to see what, if I was allergic to them. Gotcha. Um, all right. So you used to when. So one thing. So notice the word, what you did. I'm asking, is there any discomfort here? And she goes, no. And notice what happens though. Her mind takes over, and she says, but I used to. Mm -hmm. And then I'm saying, what used to? So what used to be here? Um, I think it was plantar fasciitis. Okay, so you've had plantar fasciitis, yeah. which, by the way, is also often um, people with immune issues. And plantar fasciitis tends to go together. It doesn't mean everybody with plantar fasciitis has it, but they're, you know, because. Tell me if there's. Anybody here has plantar fasciitis? Often, immune point does a good job. Okay, so immune point, which is between large intestine 11 and 10, but on the, on the edge of the bone, does a good job for plantar fasciitis. It doesn't mean it's the only point I use, but it's one of the points. The, 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 um, the fascia on the foot and the nose mucosal membranes come embryologically from the same place. They, they are the same development. That's why there's a connection between immune tissue and plantar fasciitis. Okay, well, at least that's what we say, whether it's really true, but you know, that's your explanation for it. All right. So I know that she's someone who's, who wants to process everything in the brain. Okay, because when I ask her about the body, she doesn't say no, nothing. She then she, she, she catches on to what happened in the past, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that not not all not everybody would. Okay, so I'm gonna poke abdomen if you don't mind. When so I start with the left side spleen channel because she didn't complain of say colitis or something like that. She doesn't complain about the the, the descending colon. Chances are she won't have anything here. Does that feel just like my, you know, feels like, so now you know what my fingers feel like. It's important that they know what my fingers feel like, because otherwise they can say pain everywhere. You know, because they don't, you know, nobody's ever poked their abdomen. No. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Left, left spleen is okay. So now she can tell me if something feels different. So notice I'm, I'm poking and notice that my body moves. Oh, oh. 
Okay, I think where where it hurts in the back or in the, okay. So what happened was I this doesn't, but this does. Yeah. yeah, this is more inguinal. Okay, so and so there's something on the inguinal. How about stomach thirty? Yeah. Okay. How about this stomach thirty? Yeah. Okay. But yes on this yeah. and okay. So left stomach thirty and inguinal. And how about left stomach 26, 27? Right stomach 26, 27? You know? Under kidney 16 and under kidney 16? They're all okay? How about red line? Yeah. A little something? Okay, and I'm staying here a little bit to feel it, to see if I can feel a pulse. And I, I'm not. Okay. Red 12? Yes. Oh, fine. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, 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 it's okay. It takes a while before we both know what the other part is. 15. It's okay. Okay, so something here, mm -hmm. and here, and here, correct? All right. How about 17? So obviously 17, I can't go like that. It's a little different palpation wise. Anything? Okay. Compare for me. Under the ribs on the left, and under the ribs on the right. There's something here, it looks a like. Bit, yeah. Yeah. Okay. A little bit. Okay. No, no. How about number 14? Okay. And I'm always doing that in comparison. Now, since she had left side, so she basically has right under the ribs, puts her in the liver category, presumably liver deficiency. She has right side, stomach 30, and inguinal. And she has some on red 9. Mm. Okay. Now, um, compare... Oops, sorry, I was on the road for a second. Compare the two sides of gold bladder 26. Okay. Yes. All right. So that's what I got from the abdomen. Okay, I'm making no judgments yet. I could I could go on into all sorts of places right now. I should really check her navel a little bit more carefully because she has allergies. Nasal allergies and navel are related. So yeah. uh, that was the red navel. Boom. 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 Only the first one. No. Oh, all of them. Okay. Yeah. So, original immunity ultimately, you know, did come from the navel because it comes from the umbilical cord, right? The, the, the pulsing of the umbilical cord at the end, the, the, the baby gets the immunoglobulin globulins from from the mother. Okay. So, and plus location. The nose is the center of the face, and the navel is the center of the abdomen. So there's kind of like a reflection in some weird way. Okay. So sometimes we say, this is the nose, the navel is the nose, stomach 25 reflects the eyes, REM4 reflects the 20, the top of the head, and the ears are reflected on liver 13. Okay. So it's as if you took, you took, you took her and you put the nose on, onto the navel, then you have the eyes, the top of the head, and the ears. Okay. So it's just a way of if you like to map it. Does it always work? No, but it works enough to make it useful. Does okay. the mouth reflect on the corner We... I don't have one for it. No. Off the top of my head. <laughs> so. The mouth doesn't need reflections, it reflects itself constantly. <laughs> <laughs> so. um, no, it's an interesting... I've never even thought of asking that question. It's kind of an interesting... Um, Okay, so she has the allergy. Oh, the other thing we want to check on her, because, because we know there's a hormonal issue, is kidney 13, stomach 28, a little bit, okay? So stomach, kidney 13 is uterus, stomach 28 is ovary reflex. So she has an ovary reflex on the right side, and 13, and 28. So just right side ovary, not left side, does not show. Okay, so that's the abdomen, and I'm not making judgments quite yet. I'm just collecting. So now the next thing. Sorry, did you say kidney 13 was? Kidney 13 is uterus. Uterus. And stomach. It's, it's, it's just think of where they are um, geographically. You know, the uterus is inside and the ovaries outside. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, the SCM on the right side. One. Two, three. The, oh, and only the bottom one on the on the left. Okay. How about the skinny? Yeah. Two, three. First, First two. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. 
the both sides same, the scale lines? Okay, I'm just going to pull your hair up if you don't mind. Okay. And so I'm going along the occipital ridge, and the further out I get, the more it's related to. Well, we have some tightness here, it looks like. But uh, the further out I get, the more it indicates hormonal. Okay. So on the vertebrae, you don't mind. Two, three, four. Okay. Yeah. Now, the problem with the occiput is the occiput also reflects autonomic nervous system and especially blood pressure. So that's why the, only the lateral part actually reflects the hormonal part. Now I'm going to be on the right side. One, two, three, four. Third and fourth. Third and fourth. Okay. So the right side is the third and fourth and not so close to the spine, whereas on the left side you get it already by the spine. Okay. Fair enough. And now I'm going down the, cer down the spine on the cervicals. One, two, three. All of them. All of them, okay. And one, two, three. Yeah. All of them. Okay. Is that on the other side? Are they or are actually on the vertebrae? I am not on the vertebrae in the center. I'm on the, si I'm on the toes and I'm pressing towards the center. Mm -hmm. So when I'm on the right side, I'm under her neck and pulling towards me. And when I'm on the left side, I'm pushing away from me. Does that make sense? Okay. Hormonal, I want to check UB2. I don't check UB2 on everyone. But one, two, three. Third. The third one. Mm -hmm. And one, two, three. That's fine. That's fine. So only this side. Okay, interesting. And any discomfort? All right. Any discomfort here? It's pain too? All right, so we know she has liver because it shows. And now if she has uh, hormonal problems, it, it could have to do with the way the liver metabolizes hormones also. So it, it conceivably could make sense. She has the ovary reflex on this side. And she, this could be related to her breathing problems, which may, may be related just to immunity because stomach 30 has to do with breathing. You have to be able to breathe. <coughs> Your breathing really starts at stomach 30, right? You're all looking at me like, like we would like to say yes, but we don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Must start at stomach 30. It says so, Ling Shu chapter, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right? Okay, no, just for me, because stomach 30, if you're breathing, of course, you, you know, you can breathe into the abdomen or not. It's up to you. But, if you're not, you, in order to pull the diaphragm down, there's going to be an activity all the way down to the, to the pubic bone. Okay? So the origin of the breath in some ways comes here, from here. Okay? It's, just the, it's just the nature of it. Because if it doesn't, it means the breath is very shallow. If, there's no, if, you, can't, if you can't feel the breath at your pubic bone, at stomach 30, you know, on, to some, some of it, then you then the breath is just up in the scalings. And her scalings, by the way, are very tight in her breathing muscles. Don't forget one of them. She's had, we don't know, she's, she has, they may have misdiagnosed her as asthma, but they didn't misdiagnose that she had problems breathing. That's she, you, that was, you can't, you know, that's, that's a reality that really happened. Okay, so her breathing muscles are tight and her capacity for, for, like let's say grabbing the air, or like it's the kidney grabs the chi, right? Is the expression in Chinese, right? That is lacking. Okay, so and she definitely has some circulatory problem because her pulse is so, um, you know, a little bit tiny. But it got stronger. Yeah. So all right. Um, so I'm thinking. So the things I need to test are immune, liver because it's there and hormones, and the thing is, and notice that everything is in the neck. Mm -hmm. It all comes from here. Now, where do you think that comes from? You have a number of options why this would be like that. Who said blood pressure? She says she has blood pressure. She has low blood pressure, so. Mm -hmm. There could be, the, the stress issues, yeah, so it could be the autonomic nervous system can show a lot here. It could be the breathing. Mm -hmm. And it also could be, so if she, 
she didn't sit, you know, because she didn't sit, but if she's lacking in shui, okay, what will happen if you don't have a push down, you don't have the capacity to grab here, the body, the body's going to try and lift itself from the top. And it's going to do this, because it doesn't have a bottom, okay? So, um, so let's see what, what we discover, okay? So, um, since the very first injury relates to the breath and the allergies, let's start, let's assume that that's the most, you know, that that's the most important, just for the sake of it, okay? So you had here and here. Now, immune point in liver should not be related, but I'm going to, then you have here, some. Yeah. Right? right? Mm -hmm. This one? That's okay, actually. Okay, compared to the left side. Because originally you said something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This one? Yeah. Okay. Immune, uh, so I'm, not, I'm now pressing on immune point. I may have the wrong one, but you know. Now, I'm on purpose going against the liver, which is on the opposite side. In other words, if immune is really important, it should affect the liver to some extent, not resolve it necessarily. So I'm going against the furthest thing possible in terms of relationship. How is that? On my arm. Forget the arm. Oh. <laughs> On you, under your rib. Uh, it's okay. It's okay? Yeah. But it was, uh, unfortunately, it was unreliable. Because she... Yeah, I can feel it on my arm. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forget That's the arm. Right. Okay. Now, let's go against... This is at least the same side. How is this now? It's okay. And how is this side? Yeah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Notice, so the official reflexes that immune should resolve are <coughs> Sanjav 16 on the neck. Okay? Maybe stomach 26, 27 on the right. Okay? I'm especially going against the things it's not supposed to in order to know how important it is. Okay? Now, you also have here. And again, I'm going opposite side. If this side works, the same side will work better, but I ju I'm just testing. Hi. Can you still feel it? Is but it it's any, not as. By percentages, how much not as bad? 50%. 50% better. Okay, that's significant. Okay, so. And now? Uh, yeah, that is gone. Okay. So do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm on purpose setting challenges for myself because if I don't, I'll be using dogma. Okay, and when you use dogma, you have a lot of chances of missing. So it will work for a certain amount of patients, and then the ones that are more complex, you, you kind of miss the opportunity to, to, to challenge yourself. So I'm cha I'm, in this case, I'm challenging myself on purpose because, well, you know, it's a class, and that's what the class is about. Okay, so now. Remember, you have actually, it was more one, two, and three. Okay. How are we doing? One, two, and three. Uh, one's fine, two, I can still feel. Okay, and three? Yeah, three as well, I can still okay. feel. Okay, and when you say still, it's, that's a very dangerous thing because I feel, It feels the same. The same, okay, it didn't affect it. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Now, she is, if you don't want to bend here for me. UB66 is a hormonal point, okay? Sorry, outside a little less. Okay. How is one? How is two? And how is three? Yeah, much better. Much better. Actually, I can only feel three very slightly. Okay, so we have a confirmation that UB66 does a good job. Now, I, of course, UB66, first of all, let me not press that, uh, because the leg is different now. Here still? Mm -hmm. Okay. When I press 66, how is the ovary? Better. By how much? Like completely. Completely. Great. So I get a confirmation that, but that I expect. UB66 in the ovary, hey, if this is, if this is a hormonal and this is the ovary, well, gee, big deal. But this I didn't, ex you know, this, the SCM releases only because, now, I didn't check, by the way, the cervicals on purpose. Okay, because the cervicals, you will say bladder channel, bladder channel. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm constantly setting myself up to fail. Because if I don't, I was, it, was, it really was correct. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it's important to, to do that. Okay, now you have around the navel, you have this really icky one, this one, this one, and this one. And it looks like number one and three are the worst. Um. Okay. How's number one now? Mm. Yeah, better. Yeah. I can okay. still feel it slightly. Okay, and, num and how's number three? Yeah, better. Okay, so. One more. Navel and spleen nine relate. Now I'm going to address by, by the way. Do you see this? Chubby, chubby? No, no, no. Chubby spleen nine. Mm -hmm. So I'm willing to guarantee that Ruben has no chubby spleen nine. <laughs> okay. Because it's, it, his type is, it's, if I wanted to use spleen nine on him, it's, it's going to be like horribly uncomfortable because it's against the bone. But her, there's plenty of space here. Uh oh. Sorry. That's right. How is number three? Yeah. Gone. How is number one? Gone. How is, you said the third one here, right? Yes. Spleen 9 and the SCM, lower SCM have nothing to do with each other by mm -hmm. any dogma that I'm aware of. How is the lower SCM here? By how much? I know it's not I gone. It's not gone, no, but. 75%, 60%, yes, just to evaluate, it's giving some, it's only 60, okay, one, one, boom, yeah, that's, better. that's better, okay, mm -hmm. spleen 6, because the reason why I'm thinking if she's low blood pressure, spleen 6, spleen 9, pericardium are my dogma, okay, for blood pressure, so basically I've arrived at the conclusion that I'm going to do immune blood pressure and you'll be 66. Blood pressure is a number of points granted, but it's one idea. Okay, it's it's important to to know that distinction because it's not the number of needles, especially not with my kind of needle. It's no big deal. It's not like oh, too much. Gee, you know, you know how people say no more than eight needles or ten needles because they're too depleting the chi, something like that. With these needles, it's not a big deal. Okay, you can use twenty needles if you really want to. The problem is how many ideas are you using? If you're using, starting to use more than three ideas now, if you're using three ideas and then throwing a little bit extra, not the end of the world, but once you're starting to use more ideas, you're going to get into trouble. Now, because spleen 9 does a good job, and because, or to some extent, actually spleen 6 did a better job, I'm curious about gold butter 34. Okay, and I'll tell you why. It will come in, in, a, in a little bit on those notes that we see. Because God, first of all, spleen nine and gallbladder thirty-four are what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are part of hot flashes, but there's a reason for that that's related to, to this other thing. Because she doesn't have hot flashes. Mm -hmm. Hot flashy ones, I like that. <laughs> um, Tendons. Neck. Do you know the names? Yin, yin Ling Chuan and Yang Ling Chuan. They're the same name, one is Yin and one is Yang. Okay? Ling Chuan means um, a fountain, something that pops up. So if she doesn't have Chuai, that's another way for me to get Chuai from under the knee. And Gobbara 34 is the Yang of that. And Ling means a mound. Now in Spleen 9, it's very obvious there's a mound here. As we grow older and gravity pushes down, it's going to start accumulating here. So take the mound, take the accumulations, and <laughs> fountain them upwards. Okay? So. So go by the, the, the is the fountain. They both. They both have oh, the same right. characters. Both they have oh, okay. a yin mound fountain and a yang mound fountain. Oh, nice. Yin ling chuan and yang yang ling chuan. Okay, they're just yin and yang of the same name. And I'm going to show you what that means in terms of the knee. I'll, I'll give you a lot of references on, on that. Okay? So, if, uh, if Spleen 9 did a decent job for her, I want to know if I've got a 34 look. So, how are we doing here? Okay. How are we doing on stomach 30? Okay. How are we doing on this icky one? Okay, uh, can I you tell as much? 
50%? Yeah, I, I am a person who loves percentages. Okay. Okay. Now, you had one, two, three, and four, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, excuse me about the knee. How is one, two, three, and four? One's gone, but I can still feel the others. Uh, the same? The same. Okay, so it didn't do a good job, but on the other hand, how is one, two, three, and four? Uh, it's the same. Okay, so this combination actually is not so important, is, is not so useful for her. Okay, this is the problem when you're teaching, you want to teach something and it's, it's going to say, sorry, it's not going to work. So is it the occiput or the cervicals that you're that was the up, Sorry, that was the occiput. But the occiput, I, the thing is I know I can get the occiput from blood pressure under the third toe. Okay. Hi, two, three, four. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> See, I already, you know, this is the thing, I already know what I could do for it. You know, I'm looking, no, no, and I literally treat my patients the same way, okay? Because I don't see 100 patients a day. Okay, I'm not one of those people. I'm always challenged if, if I have the strength. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you don't. Screw this. Put the nails in. Bye-bye. Next time we'll talk again. <laughs> but if, if I have the, if I have the wherewithal to do it, I'm constantly trying to go against what's not normal because I'm preparing myself for the possibility that if I just did the standard, it doesn't mean I ignore the protocol, but if I just did the protocol, I'm looking for what else I need. Okay? If I just do the protocol, I'm setting myself up that next time they come with, and I failed. I'm trying to prevent the failure of them coming the next time and saying it didn't hold. Okay, that's just my mentality. I'm always preparing for the possibility it looks good right now, it won't look good next week. Okay, how many patients come that way? Less than 50% granted. But, you know, those are the ones that are the challenge. The ones that get better are not the challenge. Okay, it's, they're not the interesting cases. Is that, okay, one more. I want to check hormonal. Inner yin, okay, is a hormonal point. This area is hormonal. Okay. Hi. One, two, three, four. Yeah. This you really like. Yeah. Okay. So her chi no no. So there's different kind of missing chi. Okay. There is the type that where spleen on gold butter 34 can do it, and there's the type that inner yin level with liver nine but on the kidney channel can do it. And you know this point because when you press the heel down and lifted the ankle bone, you felt this area. You know, this is not a, um, you know, this is not some old Chinese metaphor. This is in your body. You have it. And this is the other thing. Can you make this in your body? You can't make yourself have acne. <laughs> okay? You can't have her in your body. But you can imitate what you can. Okay? Hmm? I'm just looking. Well, yes. it can be here. It can be here. I mean, you know. Somewhere. somewhere around there. You know, no, that's basically how, how I think. It's somewhere around there. I don't, I don't really have to be clear to school. So, did you just go up until you fell into the right place? Okay, so the way I was taught to find yeah. over nine, okay, which is how I translate it, you know, here. Yeah. Okay, because nobody, so officially, Inner yin is defined as five fingers above kidney ten. It's not a very nice definition, I'm sorry mm -hmm. to say. So my preference is I define it as on the kidney channel, level with level with um, liver um, with liver nine, but on the kidney channel, the way I was taught to find liver nine was slide until you stop. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's just how I was taught. So I do the same thing on the kidney channel. And you know whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. <laughs> so, okay. So, immune point will come last, not because it's last in um, usefulness, but because I can't do pericardium if I already did the immune point. It's not comfortable to then turn her arm. Okay. So, let me start with. So, we're, we're, what we're saying is we're going to do spleen six, spleen nine plus pericardium with under the third toe, which is your blood pressure, plus immune, plus UB66, plus inner yin. UB66 and inner yin go together. They're hormones. So I'm doing blood pressure, 
immune and hormones. Okay? Then let's see where she stands. Or she'll be still lying down, hopefully. But <laughs> okay. So spleen six. And I've already done all my checking. In other words, I know I'm on safe ground here for right now. Then I recheck the abdomen and go, oh, totally screwed up, didn't do it well. That's okay. But I've done enough checking to believe that, that I'm probably okay. So for those of you who are new, so spleen nine is needle totally upwards under the bone. That's why for someone like you, this, doing spleen nine this way works, but doing it this way, you know, I'm looking for the chubbiness in spleen nine. I prefer that they, they're chubby there before I needle it. Chubby is a word that makes sense. Hmm? Fleshy. Fleshy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a complicated English word. Oh, complicated. Oh. 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 It sounds like fat from yeah. where I'm lying. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's pretty much what it says. <laughs> it's colloquial fat. <laughs> But even skinny, even skinny women have chubby, 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 oh, chubby yeah, 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 it's, it's true though. I mean, it's like it is a particularly uh, painful, chubby point on a lot of women, especially. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I never had chubby spleen nine until ten years ago, and now I do. Oh, he's got a chubby oh, spleen nine as well. So it's, it's nothing, you know. And I'm thin, yeah. and I'm a, men generally have less of it. But as yeah. you grow old, there's no option. You know, it's, it's extremely rare for someone over 50 to not have some chubbiness. The thing is that people at 20 or 30 even, especially men, where there's, it's, it's like the bone and the skin are like totally together. That is not a good place to, to you know, to, to go, you know, go, wow, you're a spleen nine type, I really want to stick a needle there. That's not, so I'm looking for something, you know, trust me, there is way chubbier. <laughs> no, 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 there really is. You know, that what you, have, you have enough for a needle. Any discomfort here? Okay. So that suggests pericardium 4, okay, as opposed to pericardium 3 plus 5, okay? Because metal, if the fire point is painful, I use metal water. But if it isn't, and I tend to generally prefer pericardium 4 over 6. So, but so if you're not sure, go against the neck. Hi, you had something here. Is yeah. it still? Yeah, okay. That's, unfortunately, spleen didn't do it. Okay. How is now? Uh, By how much? Uh, 50%. Okay, compare with pericardium 6. Mm, it's about the same. About the same, okay. Let's take this one. Yeah? yeah? So. Pericardium 4. And six. Yeah, okay. okay, so I don't get a difference between the two, so what the hell? Go with four. Oh, sorry, sorry. So my pericardium four is three fingers below pericardium three. There is a little depression here. On, on, on me, you can see it very clearly. Okay, there's a depression. Okay, I'll show you a picture of someone hand standing, and you'll, you'll understand it, and you'll understand why I say there's tri involved mm -hmm. in the pericardium. Okay, so any discomfort here? It's not a typical for someone to have one pericardium aid but not the other. That's the most typical, or, or neither. It's very rare for them to have both pericardium aids. That's, you know, I've had maybe two patients in my whole career that both pericardium aids were painful. Okay, so you have this side, you have one, two, two. and three. One's okay, two's not. Two's not, okay. So sometimes I have to move the point a little bit. So the greatest. So we are quote unquote done with blood pressure. I didn't do under thirty. Why? I always leave under thirty. As well. you know, that, that it's it's the it's it's a point that people get get scared of. I leave it till the end, of, unless I absolutely have to do it at the beginning. So if I can get away with leaving it to... Some people, nothing will move until you do it under the third job. So poor, you know, poor patient, bang. Um, but if I can, I leave it to the end. So, still some here, right? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Uh, 
pounds now. Better. By how much? A lot. Seventy-five oh. percent. Okay. Fair enough. So you. And. Not so much. Okay. This reaction suggests under the third toe. In other words, it gets better with pressure. You put the needle in, and it doesn't get better. You know, like it's like, like it's disappointing. Chances are, I will need. I, you know, by the time I do the under third toe, it will work. So, that's just chances. How's that? Okay. Okay. So we'll put the needle and recheck because and chances are she'll say, nah, not so good. good. No, no, it's a type of. Per that's just the type. Okay. Yeah, it's better, but still alive. Okay, she's torn. Do I want to prove it? Do I want to prove it? <laughs> 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 it's all right, no problem. And you be sixty six. So I'm now on the hormonal aspect of it. I strongly recommend getting serin 15s, the, they're called zero 02, I believe. Um, the, 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 you can use the, the light clean, or I prefer the dark green. Um, it's just so much easier. And, and I do spleen three with these, I do under the third toe. They gener they're just afraid of the area, so they pull back, but the needle itself then usually is not an issue. And this is so-called completes the hormonal, the inner yin. Are you needling perpendicular then? Uh, up towards the stomach channel. Yeah. Okay. And lastly is the under the throat toe. Okay. You okay? So now I've done everything that I thought was useful. No, this is, and now I need to recheck, you know, make sure that I want to see what's happening. So first of all, we have the Ren9 business that I thought would get better with under the third toe. Did it? Yeah. Okay. How about here? Yeah. And here? And here? Yeah. Okay, good. How is... This one in stomach 30. Yeah, better. Okay, good. Okay. How is the ovary? Yeah. Something. Still. Something, but oh, fair enough. Okay. Ten okay. So, so I know what's left. Okay. So now I can, you know, you add a little flourishes. You know, well, let's find out because the main thing was more in the neck. How is one, two, and three? I can feel three. So still something on three. Okay. How about one, two, and it was three that you had before. Fine. That's fine. So just this one. Yeah. And it was wait. The ovary. Over. The ovary. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so fast. <laughs> Couldn't forget I can okay. One, two, three. The scalings. Good. One, two, three. Uh, I can feel three. So three and three. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to for the right side because the right side is what's left because I haven't addressed the liver and that might be what's going on. But, uh, okay. One, two, three. 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 Yeah. And you had the ox put out here. How are they? Okay. They're good. Okay, left side. One, two, three, four. It's okay. One, two, three. 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 Yeah. And three. Mm -hmm. And did you say? Yeah. Okay. If. Okay. A uh, how is now? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. How is this one? Yeah, you can still feel that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how is the scale here? It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. All right. Um. You had. Oh, and you had three here also. Yeah. How's now? Mm -hmm. Better, but better but now. Okay. So the liver is one possibility. Um, 
you haven't used any kidney implants. I know, I know. I, that, that was my next... <laughs> Your next one. That's the next one coming up because there is a hormonal issue. Um, possibly, liver, it, yeah. there's, there's kidney, but I still wanted to try the liver yeah. right because of the right side. Yeah. So. Did you have any Hi, how's now? Same. Okay. How about the the right side? Yeah. It does the right side, but doesn't do the left. Yeah. Okay. What point are you using? Kidney you? seven. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. How about here? Okay. Yeah. All right. And ovary. It's supposed to do ovary, but let's check. It's on the left side. No, 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 no. It's, it's fine, it's fine. How is the opposite side? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Good? Okay, so the only thing that I'm, I still owe you is this one. Uh, no, at the back. Oh, I'm sorry. Any points for Alzheimer's? <laughs> <laughs> this one, right? That's okay, actually. There. There. Yeah. Okay. If they diagnose her with polycystic ovary disorder, yes, I, I know that there's two different syndromes that are called that. One is actually, they actually have cysts, and there are many, and one is if they have more testosterone than supposedly women should have. But still, I, I don't know why they call this the same, but maybe cyst point does a job, the job anyway. Okay? Plus, she had liver. So liver eight is my cyst point. Is, is an abscess counted as a cyst? Oh, an abscess? Yes, it could. Yes. Could yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. good? Yeah. All right. So rather than kidney, as it happens, liver 8 does a better job. Oh, it wasn't kidney 10 you were testing, it was liver 8. No, it's testing. liver 8. Okay. Liver eight. Close, but... I was thinking of, way, of a way to express it in ovary terms. <laughs> <laughs> the no cigar didn't do it. <laughs> interested in the navel two things. First of all, REN9 is very important in, you know, in terms of uh, Shen issues, okay? Because the point underneath it, REN8, is called Shen Shui, the, gate, the, the, the obstacle for the Shen, okay? Or the passage through an obstacle to the Shen. Secondly, um, it relates to nasal allergies, which is like a big thing. So in a second, okay. Over is good? Yeah. All right. This one's good. Yeah. These are good. Yeah. This is good. Yeah, I need to move and do the keys. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So I now basically I, I did my duty in terms of the abdomen is cleared. Okay, I, I this is what came up. I found a strat I played with strategies until and added what I needed to add until I got it clear. No. I owe her something for a symptom, which I should have probably checked before, but I didn't. No, no, I should have. Anything one, two, three, four, and it's unfair because she already has immune protein, so. Nothing? Okay. One, two, three, four. And she didn't have anything under 24. Okay, so. Because she did oh. have a bladder, a little bit on the bladder. Oh, yes, yes, she had to, yeah. Uh, which could be sinuses also, granted, but more and more. How she had, you had one, two, three. How's that? Yeah, that's not very slight. Very slight. Okay. In case it's allergies, how's now? Um, it's the same. The same. 
And now suddenly she has a red nose. She has a pulse around her navel. She didn't have that before, I swear. It's okay. <coughs> no. no, no. Sometimes that's what happens. Suddenly, you know, a layer gets peeled, and you know, you think, well, the pulse should be there. You know, it's not like a, a mental, you know, like a psychological thing. We peel that. the body's showing you very clearly. So, red nine pulse for me, the best point for it is is this one, Mushu. Mm. It's okay. Go on. So I take REN4 and go all the way to the side. And this particular one is maybe not quite on the dead bladder 26, it's a little more front than it needs to be, you don't need to worry. And it's under the iliac bone, okay? Whereas gallbladder 26 is above. I don't know why, but people sometimes ask, what's the difference between this and gallbladder 26? The difference is, gallbladder 26 is level with REN8, <laughs> Mushu is level with REN4, mm -hmm. but in terms of the actual locality, gallbladder 26 is above the bone, gallbladder, um, gallbladder 27, Mushu, is below the bone. It's basically, it's, it's in the um, glute medius, okay, which means it's, it's a place that supports the whole body. Okay. And how are we doing? It's good. All right. So, I can say I didn't add any idea whatsoever by adding Mushu, because Mushu is also, even though I used inner yin for hormones, inner yin and Mushu have to do with the lift. They both do. And the lift, if there's a lack of lift, it will show as tight neck, or in the eyebrows also. Some people actually will try and lift themselves from the eyebrows. <laughs> you know, no, I mean, it's the nature of, you know, um, what happens when, you, when your legs are not working? Something has to lift you up. Are you comfortable? Good. Would you like to be covered? I would have, that would have been the obvious. And the thing is because then I would have gotten deeper into autonomic nervous system issues. And I was trying to see what I can do. But yes, you absolutely can. See, the point is not that <coughs> you, this is like typical um, of what happens when you treat people in a class. People, as a student, and I, are you okay? Yeah. And I do the same thing. But you want to, could you use this? Could you use, yes, well, you could, that's the whole point. You can do it in many ways. So yes, Sanjo, it will wash five you know, would be very good for releasing the neck and for the autonomic nervous system. And, but the thing is then it's, it takes away possibly from my other method of thinking of trying to go against the blood pressure as, as a method of working with the autonomic nervous system. So yes, if it wasn't going to work, that would be the next step because that's the obvious one of it. Okay, so that if it wasn't resolved, I would add some job to this. Does that answer? Something tickle, I mean, t what tickles to my brain makes me think I get uncomfortable is because the first issue was a breath one, wasn't it? But we didn't actually treat either the lung or the kidney channels. The breath thing was probably my assumption since it was a misdiagnosed um, thing. Yeah. Um, First of all, the breath is not just kidney and lung, but even the breath is also spleen. But, um, or, well, sorry, not spleen, but, um, you know, the, the, you know, the, the exhale supposed to come but we don't know enough about it because she yeah. didn't tell us. But my suspicion is what she had was an, you know, she probably had an allergic reaction type of asthma. That it was... And moved. Hmm? And moved to a different town. Area. Yeah. And then it stopped. In fact, when it started, oh, oh, oh. moving to it. And when did it stop? Uh, when I moved away. <laughs> yeah. So chances are, yeah, because she said she had all these other allergies. She's an immune type. She had tonsils removed later on. You know, she had all these other issues. 
that the breathing was not, um, I mean, there is allergic asthma also, but my suspicion is that what's, what's happening, that the immune component is more important than the actual lung tissue stretchability mm -hmm. issue, which is what asthma, asthma is when the, are they called alveoli in the lungs or are yeah. they called something else? Okay. Mm -hmm. when, they, when they can't come back to, to the right size, so they've expanded, and now they, you know, the, the ball has expanded and it's not willing to contract. That's why, you know, for, you know, regardless of whether they say it's hard to breathe in or out, what happens if you, if the, you like <coughs> force the breath out, it kind of takes the spasm away because you're forcing the alveoli to contract. Does that make sense? So, it's, I don't think she's like quote unquote true asthma. I think there's an obstruction in the breathing because of all the, Inflammatory reactions because of the dust or you know, I don't know, whatever it is that. And notice that the way she lost weight is by eliminating allergenic foods. So she seems to be a relatively allergenic, you know, like, uh, predisposed to allergy kind of issues. Okay. So, anyone else? In, in Kiko's book, I noticed she wrote about if children have these things, you put some kind of plum in there. Navel. Have you had experience? Plum in the navel. I can't say it. Umbushi. Um, yeah, that's it. And it said if you put it in like overnight, especially if children tend to have respiratory stuff. I thought, oh, I've never done that. Have you? No, I haven't. Um, <laughs> Plus, where did you get umbushi plants from? I don't. I was she hung out with her in the fridge. <laughs> yeah, the fridge. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's one right here. Um, yeah, I, I don't have any, I don't have, and I have to say that I am really not good with children. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't, I don't treat children, I mean, occasionally I'll treat children if they're like old enough to communicate and they'll kind of, no, I mean, you know, I once had a kid who was like six years old with some weird kidney disease and stuff, and I said to the parents, I go, no, no, but my, this other, I can just said, you're the better, you fine, and the kid thankfully acted like he was 15. Uh, was, no, because it's it's hard. You know, you have to have a personality that loves kids and can commute. Because I'm, I need, you know, like even with adults, percentage. How much? Well, how do you expect a child at six to tell you what percentage it's better? It's impossible. You know, so I, I'm a little too demanding for for, for kids, and I'm not in. You know, like some. No, you know, like. My cat sitter he loves kids, loves cats. I love cats, I don't have kids. <laughs> you know, it's, I don't relate to children, so to ask me about pediatrics is like, well, it was just like not just a waste of time, you'll get the wrong answers. Either, but mm -hmm. my daughter has it, and I don't treat children, and I just wondered what you do with the plum. You know, I don't know how you prepare it, what you did, or I might have a look on YouTube or something. <laughs> so you have no That's idea, so look it up on the internet or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, my suspicion is, is that, I mean, you know, my recollection is that Kiko's not that great with kids either. Yeah. It was, no, no, it used to be that, you know, the kids would go to her husband, you know, way back. So it's, po so it's possible that this is something that's like famous in, in Japanese, you know, in the Japanese literature, that when kids have blah, 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 you, you put a bushy plum, plum in, in their navel. Um, and leave it overnight, that's what it says in that book. <laughs> is it the whole plum? Oh, see, that's what I was wondering, I don't know how I'm not sure works. exactly how you, yeah. <laughs> how yeah. you fit it in. I, I, I will imagine you mush it. I don't know, I don't know. But, um, I'm not doing the salt mocks or anything. I'm not doing that. I've done the salt mocks. Well, I just thought it was interesting. Cause All I know, is, I'll tell you what, with kids, what, what, I, what I know, I mean, so these are the kinds of things you have to ask someone like Stephen Birch, you know, who like really likes treating, you know, the, the people who do a lot of pediatrics and, and stuff like that. My understanding of the dogma with kids is generally immune point, do 14, navel, you know, you do whatever moxa you can. That's my, does, that does not make me qualified to treat a child <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. And I'd only do my child. Right now. So I, I wish I had the answer for you, but I don't, but I would... Just keep looking at it. I'll, I'll give it a go, I'll let you know. Yeah, well, what you can do, I, I would assume you can either cut them. I mean, I'm not exactly sure what these unbushy plums are because no, I don't. It's, I, it's like they're apricots sort of thing. Right, and it's sour. It's sour, it salty. It's sour, but without pickling, you can't eat it because it's too much of cyanide. So uh, you, you pick it. So it's just a usually um, uh, floppy. It's, it's, it is floppy. Yeah, but by pickling it, I suppose, because then, 
I guess you could take the pickled one. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to put cyanide into your child's navel, so you pickle, you take a pickled and mushy plum and you mush it and stick it into the navel and hose it the next morning. I mean, the thing is, how do you get it out? No, no, I mean, because all this... Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to... Yeah, I don't know. And does she have an innie or an outie? Innie. Oh, that's fortunate. <laughs> oh, right. well, can we connect this back, Bailey? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Abby, could I ask you, um, you were talking about um, cold feet, and you said cold feet is a hormonal. It can be hormonal. Can be. It can be autonomic nervous system. It can, it can be. be bad circulation, hormonal, hormonal. Uh, can be low blood pressure. Mm -hmm. It can be a number of different things. So autonom a lot of autonomic nervous system people will have cold feet and cold hands. But autonomic nervous system, one of the signs of autonomic nervous system types is Cold hands, cold feet, sweaty hands she has. S sweaty or clammy hands and feet. And the other kind of thing that I often ask is, if somebody starts a motorcycle behind you, do you get startled? Because the, most people say, I don't care. But the autonomic nervous system type will tend to say, oh yeah, I, I jump. You know? So those are three things that are fairly typical of autonomic nervous system types. Thanks. And you said the hormonal type, the cold feet, was because of a restriction of circulation? Because in the hormones, in the hormonal type, there's, a, you know, there's some correlation between estrogen and the capacity to, uh, ex to expand blood vessels. So it's not circulatory in terms of systemic circulation as in the heart. It's, um, it's more the peripheral um, arteries don't get... Ex it can't expand up being constricted, so there isn't enough. Uh, the, the circulation is good up to a point, and then it gets the the up the, the vessels are too are, are not winding enough. Because so there's, there's not the feet are cold. Because then there's not enough estrogen to do that. Yes, I, but that's my understanding that estrogen has plays a role in the dilation of blood vessels in extremities, or maybe in, in other areas as well. But it's small blood vessels as opposed to major arteries. Okay. So we happen to have seen this point already. So what, what I did was I basically did a bunch of points and you know show you a bunch of points and show you like specific uses of them and um, and how they relate to types. Okay, rather than do what we normally do, which is go through the types and go through the, you know, so this is slightly, and the advantage of doing this is that you can use these points without, without using the whole style, etc. You can just say, this is an interesting way of doing things, that's all. So, liver 8, and I, I, this, I started with liver 8, and we'll go through spleen 9 and go about 34, so we can see what's, what's so special about the knee. So liverate primarily is, um, it's a cyst and fibroid point. So in her case, polycystic ovary. <laughs> so maybe there is this, but liverate proved to be co correct. If it was not going to be right, it, it was only for liver, it the right side would have worked, but not the left. In her case, the left also worked. So I'm suspecting that there is some sort of fibroid-like possibility. Okay. It's also one of the points to use for tendons and ligaments. Okay, um, the other one would be liver four. Unlike gallbladder thirty-four, gallbladder thirty-four is not, for, in my vocabulary, is not the tendon point. I know it's the master of tendons according to TCM. My opinion is it's a master of torque. Okay, if you go skiing. Gallbladder 34 is your axis. Also, stomach 41, by the way. Okay, but gallbladder 34 is how you twisting around, maneuver, and therefore the the tendons or the ligaments they get torqued. Therefore, it has to do with movement. So it's not tendons as you you want to nourish the blood of the tendon or something like that. It's when when a tendon is like torqued, and that's why gallbladder 34 is very good for sacroiliac ligaments. Okay. So in my experience, I can't say gallbladder 34 is a great point for any tendon problem. It's great when there's a torque, and a torque is different than a twist, by my definition, this way. 
Twist is going up to 26. Twist is a major. Okay, it's a big movement. A torque is a teeny movement. Okay, there's just a little, it's just a little off enough to pull a string. That's when gold bladder 34 is good. These are small movements that happen on the axis of gold bladder 34 that make large movements when you ski sort of thing. Does that make sense? So, that's lever 8. And spleen 9, we talked about spleen 9. So, for the back. Spleen 9 is one of the main points that I will use for L4, L5. Okay? And it's also good for gold bladder 21 pain. Some people say exactly gold bladder 21 pain. They're considered spleen 9 type. You prefer that there's chubbiness. Spleen 9 is if somebody said I had my appendix taken out, they're spleen 9 type. You are probably not going to get away with treating that person without spleen 9. Now, obviously, you could, but you know, one of the first thing when somebody says I have my appendix removed in is see if spleen 9, how good that is spleen 9 for this person. Okay. Um, we use spleen 9 for if they have diarrhea. I use spleen 9 plus spleen 5 on the left, okay, and liver 4 and liver 8 <coughs> on the right. Opposite for constipation. Oh, not opposite, not opposite. Same principle for constipation, except using the yang channel. Okay, that was a mouthful. Okay. So, notice, left side is earth channel, yin earth channel, metal water. Right side is wood channel, metal water. Spleen 5, spleen 9 is metal water on the left. Liver 4, liver 8 on the right. <coughs> constipation, I take stomach 44 and 45. That's metal water on the left. And gallbladder, <coughs> 43 and 44, that's metal water of gallbladder on the right. You look confused. No, I've just come. I have written all down, but I'm sure I'll find it. It, it is somewhat. It's better, basically metal, metal water. <coughs> left side is the earth. Right side is the wood. Diarrhea uses the yin channel, constipation uses the yang channel. That's the principle. But it's the metal water points either what either way. We there's a strong metal 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 and water points are a strong concept. If you have fire fire point is painful, use metal and water because water overcomes fire. Metal is the mother of water. So so metal and water are like big points in in, in the system. <coughs> So would you use these, again, you, with all of this stuff, you're just testing with this stomach uh, 44, 45, the gallbladder um, 43, 43? If they had constipation, yeah. I would check that. It's something you would, only thing you would, would test do. it and then right. use it if it worked to clear reflexes. Well, you yeah. wouldn't just put it in just because that's the... Probably not. I mean, I very, 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 very rarely just put something in because someone said so. You know, even if it's Avi said so. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. I, I like checking. That's my personality. I like to know that because it's like, yeah, someone said so. So what? I mean, that someone can be brilliant and amazingly good, but if it, that, if it isn't working for that patient, who cares what anyone said? All that matters is if it works for the patient. And the only way I can, I can have confidence to work for something for the patient, this is where my background with Kiko is so... Is so obvious is I wanted to change something in the body. I needed to change something in the body and unfortunately I can't, I'm not good enough to be able to do it out of the box. Mm -hmm. If I could, and the tr truth is I'd rather, I'd rather make it in the body because if, it's in the, if I can make the change in the body, the, the patient themselves can also say, oh yes, I can feel that change. I'd rather do that than, um, because then I'm getting their cooperation mm -hmm. as opposed to Oh, Mr. Smith, your pulse is so much better. What the hell are you talking about? I don't know. You know it, it's not very useful. You know, they, it's, it's like I'm playing games with them. You know, so I, I prefer actual physical pressure pain disappearing as a confirmation. But it's not the only way to confirm. Listen, if you can confirm by the rate of growth of the hair on the chin, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> You know, whatever works for you. It's just for me what works is abdomen because that's my original training. 
So, you know, but if you have other methods, it's all I'm saying, I want confirmation. That, that's all. Okay. Um, so, by, by the way, here are the characters, of, you know, the mount, etc. Uh, it's a point for blood pressure, as we saw. So, the combination of blood pressure is high or low, spleen 6, spleen 9, plus pericardium. What does plus pericardium mean? Always check pericardium 8. If it's painful, do metal water of pericardium channel, pericardium 3 and pericardium 5. If it's not, chances are you do pericardium 4, but you might do pericardium 6. Either one, not both. And under the third toe. And it's also a point for Parkinson's. Parkinson's, it's a certain, it's also a certain type of pulse. It's a, this pulse is a true wiry pulse. You know, not the autonomic nervous system type. This is a pulse that's strong. It has that tightness to it. Okay, the stringiness to it, but it's strong. Whereas the autonomic nervous system type, the quality of that stringy is there, but the strength isn't there and the, the root of the pulse isn't there. Okay, an autonomic nervous system pulse does not have the same root as the Parkinson's type. The Parkinson's is a strong, aggressive, excess pulse. Go about a 34, same name but with young. It's the mean point of torque, not of tendons for me. Therefore, it's very good for sacroiliac ligaments, very good for wrists, and sometimes for shoulder. Not better for wrist than for shoulder, quite honestly. Okay. Uh, it's good for calf cramps. It's a key missing apparently. Um, especially, but for more for opposite side than same side. It's good for hot flashes with spleen 9, and it's a point that I will use for so-called exorcism. So if you're doing, uh, I think last year I talked about some of these exorcism, you know, protocols. Go over to 34, because it's a limb, it's a mound, you can, at the end of your, um, the treatment, the last needle that you would do, put in is, how do you get rid of the ghost, so to speak, or the problem, the, you know, what you're trying to exercise. The mound is a burial ground. Do you want to bury it? Do you want to cremate it? That would be moxa. You know, that kind of thing. So it, it's a point that's sort of like you, it, it's, it's a method of, you know, um, signing the signature. Whereas for me, the, what I often do as an opening for exorcism, and we talked about that last year, I believe, is stomach 44 to 24. Okay? Um, Nate, okay, stomach 44. Do 44, do you say? Do 24. Do 24. Nating and shenting, the courtyards. The courtyard to the inner, because nating, stomach 44 is an actual ghost point of Sun Tzu Yang. And do 24 is not, but do 23 is. Okay? But do 24 is called shenting, the courtyard of the shen. So these two is like a way to open up your to announce, I am, you know, going for, this is an exorcism treatment. And again, I do this all by, and check the, the abdomen change, I mean, you know, it's, you know, and then I might add something like, you know, for example, kidney nine is called jubin, meaning how to, to, the guest house is really what it means. How do I play guest to my own self, or how do I get rid of the unwanted guests? Either way, so you have a lot of options to how, what you're thinking, um, and how you want to do exorcism, but the, sig the opening signature for me would generally be stomach 44 and do 24, and the closing signature, so to speak, um, would be gallbladder 34. I sometimes think, because I come from um, a performing arts background, I sometimes think in musical terms, you know, so it's like a codicil. <laughs> gallbladder 34 is a codicil. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway. Um, so, the knee. Sorry, I have a question. What weight text would you show in the afternoon? For, for exorcism? Yeah. No, it's, the exorcism is the complaint. Is you feel that this person is obsessing with someone, they're doing things not under their own control. You know, that can be a habit like smoking, cocaine, drinking, uh, obsessive thoughts, um, you know. It's the fifth husband she's killed already. Uh, you know, whatever. You, you know, it, that was, it's when you're oh, saying, okay, you're not. <laughs> you've had a few of those? Yeah, wait till say, we could all drink those. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you're working in jail, I don't know. <laughs> no, but 
you know, when you're sort of saying there is something that's taken over your life, you know, it can be an obsession about how I look, how I want to lose weight, how I need to get more money. I mean, it's obsessive to the point where it's not no longer even socially acceptable, even in our society. But no, no, because some things are acceptable. You're supposed to run after money, but at some point it becomes unacceptable. So you know, so every society has places where this is not a ghost. For another society, that might have been a ghost. But there's a place where even for your society, <coughs> your culture, it's a ghost. So playing computer games all day might be something that could fall into this. You know, so it, it's a very sub so the idea is very subjective. You're now trying to make it very objective by making sure it's something in the body shape. <coughs> yeah. so, you know, like you were saying at the beginning, like be, think a bit creatively more, maybe. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, say someone has a bit of an addiction to sugar, and the sugar points didn't work. Well, you could think, oh, hey, up, let's try the exorcism point. Is if the addiction, no, 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 no. because it, well, the way you described it, maybe that's a difference in the way we use language. So okay. So you're saying they have a bit of an addiction to sugar that does not qualify for an exorcism. Uh, but but you tried the sugar like they protocol. Can't, and yeah. it didn't work. No, the exorcism will come into when the person, okay. So I had a patient, for example, um, if you suggested to her that she should give up sugar, there was like this major reaction and all these excuses in the world why oh, it yeah. absolutely is irrelevant and this is not it and I can give up anything I want, but of course she doesn't. You know, when, you, when you're encountering something, you, you're making the judgment that, oh, you're obsessed. You, this, is not, this is not just, well, gee, you know, I really like chocolate, and, you know, or I like ice cream, or I like macaroni, or whatever, you know, carbs. And it's hard for me to give up, but I recognize this is like, I'm obsessed. There is no way I'm giving this up. Mm -hmm. What you're working at that point is not on the sugar issue, is you're really working to try and see if you can release the mind and give it a different direction. Then we can work on the underlying physiological as well. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, very much sense. So yeah. A bit of, you know, yeah. a bit, I, I like sugar, I, I, I'm a bit of a sugar person, yeah, but the sugar yeah. points didn't work for me means, well, you know, maybe it's a liver person, therefore sugar, pro you know, I need to treat the liver so sugar points can work also. You know, there's constantly still physiological. This is yeah, when yeah, it's yeah. like, you know what, but honey, know you're person. a total mental case. Yeah. There is no physiology justifying this. This is purely, <sighs> I'm stuck in my brain. Yeah. Yes. Um, would that work with kind of people who are um, obsessed with other people, you know, because of their history, for example, abuse, you know, and they're kind of... Um, Possibly, I wouldn't, it's hard to, I mean, it, it's, th this is the thing, I don't have like a clarity to say, this is exorcism, this mm. is not. Because remember, the word exorcism, right there and then, is like, you know, there are patients you can say that to, and they will totally open up, oh yes, I want my exorcism. You know, no, I mean, and there are patients you say that to, and they're like, fuck this, this is not. And I don't like cheating, I don't like doing things to people, like, um, manipulating them, so you have to evaluate whether, they, and so this is going to be a judgment call that you say, instead of exorcism, and thinking about it this way, that this is either an addiction, something else has taken over this person's life. Something, or someone, or there's something they are no longer in control. You want to exercise, exorcise, whatever the word is, out. When that comes up for you as a practitioner, and it does every so often, then you can say, hmm, I wonder if exorcism, if this starts moving things physically in the body. If it does, you have good grounds to do it. If it doesn't, all you have is your idea. And the problem with your idea is it's an idea. So, yeah, okay, so they came to a session, they paid you, nothing happened, not the end of the world. You know, no big loss, but it's, it's, it's a loss in the terms of you didn't check. I mean, you just, then you're, you have a ghost in you that says, I want to try exorcism. <laughs> I'm, my, my exorcism is making sure that whatever I do is being monitored by mm. something objective. Mm. I'm thinking about uh, two particular patients. One, 
um, is chronic fatigue, you know, so like all hormonal, and she's got this, and she, and she just con she constantly talks. Mm -hmm. um, and she's all, it's all about her family and all about this and how she's the, rah, rah, and I say to her just please I says this I about, it's, it's, it's exhausting you know um, and she just can't seem to let go of that and I was saying no wonder you're exhausted you're exhausting me just this whole blah you know constantly and I was like so I'm wondering perhaps with her it might uh, so the first thing comes to my mind, because we have different minds, so, and I don't know the patient, so it's really totally unfair. I would say that the first thing I would start with a person like this is spleen. Then when that doesn't work, when you've looked at spleen and that clearly the different variations of spleen don't do it, then I, then I, would, do, I would graduate to that. And you'd look at spleen because? Well, spleen is overthinking. You know, she's constantly digesting the same... Okay. The same family stuff, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that's where we might approach to start with. And then, when that clearly, if that clearly has no effect and stuff, I, I would, you know, exorcism is something, well, of course, you've seen the patient, so you can jump. Mm -hmm. It's generally not something I would jump into a patient unless they clearly came, unless they expressed it to me. They want to. Are, oh, yeah. They want to. So often you, you get. You because I, I have another patient. They may not patient. say exorcism, they may not say ghost, yeah. but they, they express the terms in, with different words. Yeah, I have another patient who's very badly affected by abuse, uh, sexual abuse from being very, very small. And we are really, you know, we've been doing a lot of just calming that point, the liver four, where she's been frozen, mm -hmm. got all these symptoms, and that's really working. And, yeah. you know, and I was thinking maybe for her, because she's, you know, she gets terrible nightmares and can't sleep and things like that, because it's all starting to come up. I was wondering whether for her yeah, it might be useful. absolutely. And so what you do, so since this person has the psoas issue mm. that shows physically, mm. you check, well, stomach 44 against the psoas. Mm. And you'd only need to do stomach 44 on one side. Right, yeah. You know, to check do 24 against symptoms in the abdomen for, in the last four, five, six years, I would say is dangerous. The reason why is because, like, I, I, you may not have been at that part of what you want to talk about. Skull point right now work, all, you know, do a lot more than they ever used to. Yeah. Okay, just because we're all so grained. <laughs> you know, we're so close to our brain right now. So I, I, it, I, it's great that it does a good job, that 24 does a good job, but I would rather confirm through other points than through 24. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, practically. The opening and closing. Could you just explain practically how you... Oh, so I needle stomach 44 and do 20... 20 st uh, stomach 44, do 24. Then I do my the middle part, which would be something like, say, kidney 9 and maybe pericardium 6, main one in the gate to the inner, or it might be actually Sandra 5, the gate to the outer, depending on which direction you kind of want to go. I'll have some sort of middle to it. it. There may be a little bit more than just kidney nine and, and pericardium or some job. And then my closing, the last needle I do is gallbladder 34, usually opposite side to the one I chose stomach 44 on. And then at the end of the treatment, when I take the needle out, I ask the person, what would you, how would you like to resolve, what would you like to do with this invading entity? You have another option. You can bury them, which is called a 34. You can burn them. You can drown them. You can... Huh, what do you want to do with this little fucker that's inside of you? We're taking him out, supposedly. And then you can do different things that symbolize. This is very Taoist stuff. Um, and, and people really used to do this. So moxa would symbolize to burn them. You take the needle and give it to the person. They can, they can actually bury the needles you know, in their backyard or something. They can drown the needle, they can, you know, in, in water. I mean, they can do whatever the symbol is for doing the, for getting rid of the entity, that's what you would do you. with all the needles, except the burning is, would be specifically on gallbladder 34. But gallbladder 34 is the point that kind of symbolizing the, the extraction, the burial ground. Let's just go through through this concept of the knee, and then uh, we'll switch. Sorry, Abby, just one thing. You said that you did do stomach 44 on one side only. I tend to do stomach 44 on one side, and therefore, go about 34 will go on the opposite, most likely. 
Unless there's reasons like you, you know, if the if, if when you're checking things that you know you wow, both some forty fours are needed here for whatever reason. It's not very common. And then, of course, well, by the way, they have constipation stock for you all will go on the left. Yeah. I mean, there's many ways to play with introducing other things without overstepping. And where does the middle, the middle ground come from? Kid, kid in nine, I think, I'm sorry, I was listening and didn't take it in, but kid in nine, why is that part of the exercise? Kid in nine, because it's called, first of all, it's the opening point for the yin, it's the yin way. The yin way is how you make transitions, how you take your life and make transitions, and then make transitions of the seven and eight years. So yin way, win, way is to link, to, to make a weave out of, the, out of your life. So if somebody has invaded you, you, you no longer have a net around your own life. It's broken. So, and the name of Kidney Nine is called the guest house, Jubin. How do I play guest in my own house, or how do I kick the unwanted guests, exorcism, out of my, out of my house? And pericardium is because the pericardium is the guard, the envelope around the heart, in that sense. By name, pericardium six, besides the fact that it relates to Yin Wei, again, same concept. So you can do a whole yin wei treatment if you want. In other words, trace the yin wei channel. So then you have spleen 14, I believe, or spleen 13, the accumulations of the abdomen. You have liver 13 or liver 14. You have um, red 22 and 23. So you can do, you can play with yin wei at this point if you want. Or you can just do kidney 9 and with a pericardium. And pericardium um, 6, Besides its relationship to Yin Wei, it is called Nei Guan. Guan is a passage door, is a gate. Okay? To Nei is to inside. And this Nei, and the same as Nei Ting in Stomach 44. Stomach 44 is called the inner courtyard. Pericardium 6 is called the gate to the inner, to the inside. So they, relate, they resonate with each other. Stomach 44 and Pericardium 6 resonate with each other. Whereas Sanja 5 does not. Sanja 5 is a gate, but to the outer. Wai Guan. So you can choose Wai Guan if you want, as an exorcism. Pull the fucker out. You know, there's, I want to go inside to drag him, or I just want to pull him out. You know, there's different ways of, you, you're going to make up, you know, it's all mental bullshit that you're playing with <coughs> yourself, but you're confirming it on the body, that's all. Does that make sense? Yeah, there's a lot of points to, to, to bring into play to confirm on the body, so presumably you make a decision. Of course you make it, and, and well, so I, I confirm that stomach 44 does something, I confirm that, you know, kidney 9 does something, and then at the end, after I've confirmed it, now I stop needling. Just like I did with her. I don't confirm one, 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 I confirm no, no, the needle. No. I confirm everything, I get my strategy, needle, confirm it did something, if there's something, if it didn't do what I wanted, I, I add or possibly even start again. I have to, I'd rather not, but it happens. When you search other things, what do you mean? Um, um, people with post-traumatic stress disorders often will have stomach 30 will be locked on them because the cell, okay, so um, look at a pic, look, uh, don't go on a safari, but look at pictures. <laughs> so you see how, like most animals, they jump, they, they leap, they use the, you know, they crouch and they use, it's the psoas kicking out your ability to push forward, comes from the psoas, and look at them, look at what happens when the lion gets the, I don't know, the antelope or the giraffe or what, so, oh, well, it's easier with my cat, the mouse, okay? They, they lock in into the psoas in order to shut down the nervous system. That's what happens to people with post-traumatic stress disorders. That's why stomach 30 is called qi jie or qi chong, the, the thoroughfare of the, of, of the qi. The qi comes from here, from the psoas. There is an activation. Okay? So there, and there's a lot of theories you can see. I think it's, uh, is it someone Levine? Not Stephen Levine, but some, some other Levine guy who writes a lot of post traumatic stress disorders. Yeah. Peter Levine. Peter, okay. okay. 
Um, so th it's, it's a very common theory now with you know, post-traumatic stress disorder. There's all sorts of exercises that people can do vibrating their knees in order to release the, the inner groin yeah. and stuff. So for us, the equivalent, you know, they will have pressure pain possibly on the psoas, stomach 30 or gallbladder 27, 28 area. I release that with liver 4. The name of liver 4 is Zhang Feng. Okay, so Zhang means center and Feng means a seal. The character in Qi Jie is stomach 30. Stomach 30 in the Ling Shu is not called Qi Chong, it's called Qi Jie. The Jie is a, pretty much the same character as Feng, very slightly different. Okay, so in both, because it's a thoroughfare, meaning, you know, in liver four, it's the, it's the authority, it's the seal of authority. You stamp the seal, you know, in feudal times, you gave the seal. You have authority over this land, okay? The same character appears in the jie, also part of that character appears in, the, in stomach 30, because a thoroughfare is where you can step with authority. It's a thoroughfare. You know, you, you don't have to like wave around the bushes. There's an authority there. So they're, they're the same. And on liver four, the Ling Shu says, and you'll see it later. I believe I have it before and here. The Ling Shu says specifically that liver four, when you needle it upwards with the flow of the channel, that's not what it says, it creates harmony in the abdomen. I, and they say if you needle against, it creates chaos. Um, I've never tried needling against, so I, I can't say. So that's where, you know, this idea of like post-traumatic stress disorder, oh, the psoas, release the psoas with liver form. But don't forget, of course, uh, adrenal. Uh, that's what we've been doing yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure. But yeah. <laughs> just yeah. So. yeah, and it's, it's, it's amazing how far she's come. Yeah. yeah. So the knee, to nourish on the knee and then we'll flip. Poor Emily over. <laughs> um, so I, I just wanted to show. This is not just Chinese. This is in all cultures. Okay. So I have. This, I don't speak Farsi. I don't know nothing about Farsi. But I have a patient who does because I said so, I said something to her. I said, Oh, you know, interesting. In Farsi, it's the same thing. There is something about generation. In French, is genou, le genou. It comes from the word generate, to generate. Okay. Uh, what is it in Spanish? The name. And is it related to generate? Apparently not. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in Hebrew, also berich is comes from the word pool, and also blessing. It's the same thing. A blessing. A, a pool is the same as a fountain. It's the base of the fountain, and that's the word blessing comes from the same place. Okay. A blessing is a fountain. It creates a fountain, right? You don't want a blessing. You want a blessing that you know generates more. And apparently in Farsi, it, it has to do with birth. So the point of this all is that the knee is a place of generation, to generate new stuff. Okay? And that's why spleen and go butter 34 in, in many cases can be a very good combination to use with people. That, but this idea of when they called it chuan, and remember liver 8 also had chuan, it's chu chuan, the bending spring. The, there is a reason why they put fountains in the knee. They had the same sort of idea that other cultures had that relate the need to being able to generate more. Okay, let's take her out and switch it over. Do I want to explain sex? Sorry. Now we can turn on. 
So two things. When you, it all depends on how you work. But one of the things that I do when I turn a patient over, I look at what I've done. Why? Because by the time you come back, no, I just, you know, by the time you come back, especially if you've been treating other people in the meantime, you, you may not remember a damn thing about what, the, what, what you've done on this mm. person. So you kind of, it's a, it's a way, be, don't just stick the needles out, just like figure out what, what were you doing. Okay, so she was hormonal, she was immune, okay, and she was blood pressure. Okay, or genomic nervous system. So I want to see how much, how much of it needs to or can be duplicated on the back, or how much new stuff comes to me in the back, you know, is being called for. So, but, you know, you kind of want to gather yourself and remember, you know, this is the problem with treating people, doing two treatments on people. You have to come back together to, because from the patient's perspective, you didn't run around three other rooms. From the patient's perspective, you were, you were constantly there. You know, they're, they're, not, they're not paying you to treat other people in the meantime. They're paying you to be there for them. So you have to somehow get back in the mood of, I'm with you now. And it's happened to me a number of times. I walk into a room and I'm like, it happens. You know, it's, like, it's a lot easier to remember people when they first come in. <coughs> when, when, when they walk in the door, I, you can, you know, it's happened to me also, I, I try to make an appointment, I don't know what name to write, it's at the end of the treatment, and I just circle it and look back and, <laughs> and go, okay, yeah, it's this one. Because when they come in, you know that you have, you have to be fresh. Once they're here, you kind of, you, you let go a little bit, <laughs> unfortunately. So, just as a trick, it's worth... Um, Considering <laughs> writing their name down, yeah. <laughs> they don't need a name. They just need <laughs> they just need the needles. <laughs> so, okay, so hormonal maybe shows UB thirty two, maybe shows small intestine thirteen, may show around heart shoe. Why heart shoe? For women, not for this this specifically, because heart because the heart and the uterus are related. It's a blood situation. Okay, so let's check. Anything here? This one? But not this one? A teeny bit here? Okay, so here and teeny bit. Okay, so right side again shows more. Let's see if her liver shows on the right side. Sorry? A little bit. A little bit. A little, a little, a little. The just the one. first two. Oh, just the last one? Just the last one. This one. Yeah. Okay. How about you well? Yeah. Okay. So one, two, how about three? Yeah. Okay. So two and three. Just below the bottom. It's a little low for liver, but it's it's still reasonable. How about you be thirty two? No. Okay. How about now you're gonna say around about the heart shoe, you're gonna say, well, she also has mood issues, so the heart shoe could so we don't know, you know. Yes. Right -sided. Okay, everything is right sided. Okay, so let's start with if it's right sided and it's liver, UB thirty five on the left is is my treatment point. Because the continuation of portal vein is rectal vein and it's gonna show more on the left. Okay. How's this now? Mm, still bad, but it's yeah. Still bad. And now? Yeah, it's now it's gone. Yeah. Okay, and you had here, right? Yeah. And when I press on the buttocks, how's now? It's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And then you had here and here, correct? The first one. The first one, okay. And how's now? Um, <laughs> it's either yes or no. I was concentrating on this point. No, 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 forget this one, okay. How is this one? Yeah, it's still there. But still there? Like, so the one that it's supposed to do, it isn't yeah. doing, interestingly enough. It, it happens all the time like that. You know, the protocol says blah, blah, and you, know, you go and you use it, and it's like, now you can say it's a little below UB18, so maybe it's not so good. So, okay, let's start. Then. So still something left here, right? No? Gone? No, it's gone. Oh, good. Okay. And small intestine 13? Okay. And this I get a little bit here? Okay. Okay. And heart shoe? Okay. So now we just 
take insurance and do some more meals because <laughs> nobody pays for one meal, right? <laughs> so, is that no, no. Is that facing the No, no, it's Oh, it's just the yeah. Okay. It's the, the pants are. Um, first of all, I need to do small intestine 9 10 for as a continuation of blood pressure. Okay, between small intestine 9 and 10 out towards the deltoid um, is kind of my continuation of the blood pressure. Uh, let's see if we can. So I don't do this on every patient. Isn't Check the whole, all the vertebrae, but I will on her because I just want to find something. Yeah. Isn't it on the left side the, the, the Who's on the left side? The, that small intestine 9 and 10. No, both sides. Both sides. Small intestine 11. Oh, of small intestine 11 for cardiac is left side and digestion is right side. Small intestine 11. But small intestine 19 definitely both sides. Unless they have a shoulder problem, in which case you only do it on the shoulder side. But isn't there something about the, the one underneath the bone here, which is small intestine 10, isn't that on the left for blood pressure? I am not aware of something on those sides. What's calling? Sorry? Yeah. Well, I don't talk about Cori, but you'll go, oh. go ahead. But, but I know what you mean. I don't know what it is. Uh, like hardness. There's something that's gooey or some, something. Oh, okay. That, that, well, you, you just know. sort of feel it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the the small intestine nine ten would be. Yeah. Then you you do feel something in there. It might be a little obvious and more obvious. And obvious. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't. You yeah. You there is a feel to small intestine okay. nine ten. It's just that it's it's not. Nine and some ten all would be opposite. Uh -huh. It's somewhere in between, and it's sometimes even more to, on the body. It's, it's definitely not on the arm. It tends to be a little bit more on the body. Uh -huh. And you need into that if it's there. I need all, yeah. yeah okay. Well, I will because she's blood pressure type. I'm just, uh -huh. I'm now looking to what can I do with group two? How can I confirm group two? Is basically. So, I used to teach people go through all the wattos. And you know, and then try and eliminate them. But the truth is, I don't do that, and I do that very rarely because it's just it's time consuming, and I'm lazy. Just being honest. So, but this is what I would do: one, two, three, four. Anything? Yeah, three and four. Three and four. No, okay. It's four. It's four. four. Okay. Four. So that's like uh, T3. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Nothing. It's okay. I don't want one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Okay, under the brows, this is a T3 and One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Three. Okay, so three, three, and three. Three? Mm -hmm. Go down to the top one. And let's go. <laughs> Okay, but this one still exists, and this one still exists. Okay, how about this side? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two. You think you do one again? One. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit, a little bit, and here. Mm. Okay. Because of moods, autonomic nervous system, due to is very important, okay? Hi, how is that? Mm. Okay. And you have here and a little bit here, correct? Yeah. Boom. How is now? Yeah. And how is now? Yeah. Okay. So, the rest is protocol, because there's nothing to check anymore, right? So, the biggest curves in the spine, okay, why do I check the Watos as opposed to say, people say, why do I check the UB line? Because I'm checking the nervous system, you know, the way that, you know, how the spine and the nervous system are reacting in the body. So, what I'm going to do is, I started with do two to soothe out the whole spine, then I'm just taking the highest curves of the spine, which is, Basically, of T11, T12, and T5, T7. And I'll, and I'll move on. And I'm, I'm looking for Cori. <laughs> Very nice word. It's like people love these weird words that, you know, it makes us feel like we're so much more important because we're speaking a language no one else does, right? <laughs> Is 
she, not too bad on her, most people have like extra, it's almost like they have, someone took some dried fruit and stuck it on their vertebrae around T11 to T12. It's like incredibly common. Now, my choice is going to be T7. You have something here. Not on this side. And T5. Yes. Yeah. I could have chosen both, by the way. It's not like you have to choose T5 or T7. You can totally do both. Now, some people prefer on the back, they prefer a thicker needle. And number three, I still use number ones on the back. Um, and it is more convenient to use a thicker needle because this, that one's a little stuck, for example. So if I had a thicker needle, it would quote unquote move a little more easily. Um, but that means having two different sets of needles for front treatments and back treatments, and I prefer not to. So it's not a huge deal, but. Every so often you will get a needle that's uh, on a watto that does not feel like moving. Can I make this up? Oh, is there some immune stuff around the scapular spine? Okay, under the scapular spine is for lung infections. Lung yeah, so yes, it, it's very good for lymph nodes and lung infections. And, and, you know, under small intestine 12. But, um, and otherwise immune will be like you'll do 14. Uh -huh. I was thinking of doing, so now that you've said it, we will also add do 14 for her allergies. And this one came looking like it's needled down, but it was actually needled at 45 degrees in. It's just... Okay. You need to yeah. yeah. Generally, I needle the watos either inwards towards the spine or inwards and upwards. Okay. So this one, you can see much more clearly, is almost more upwards than inwards. Yes. And as I get above T7, I tend to just do them uh, 45 degrees in. But never down, except L5. Any questions? Um, what would you think about hay fever? Is that purely immune? It can be more than just immune. It can be liver as well, thank you. Um, there can be more than just immune and hay fever, but the, the first thing is immune. Yes. And if they don't particularly have... Yeah, 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 we should stop. If they don't particularly have any kind of reflexes that are, you know... For hay fever, mm -hmm. usually they'll show around the nose. They may show around the navel. They may show Sancho 16. And again, you know, so treat the, the, the ones that you see and consider a new point. Also consider possibly needling around the navel. And other points that for hay fever would be spleen 9 to release the navel, first, which we did on her, and gallbladder 40, not, you know, is, is also a nose point. Yeah. Not so much an allergy point, but an allergy point. So you would use the, would you do standard the, san, yeah, the standard immune kidney 6 and Sanjo 16? Do you do Oh, this? I don't actually needle Sanjo 16, but you can add kidney 6. As a kidney 6 is part of an immune protocol. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Yeah. There was broken glass and the whole way. It's been swept up. But there may still be some. Don't go out there without machines. Okay. Thank you. So we're, we have the next patient is at 2:30. So my suggestion is we pretty much stop. You know, I'll, well, you can stay if you want. I'll take her out another five, ten minutes. But you know, uh, if you want to go and have lunch, that's that's so you have more time for lunch. That's totally fine. Don't feel embarrassed or whatever. 
Um, and let's get back just before 2.30. And if you do want to stay and ask questions and stuff, I am here. So you, we can do that. <laughs> so totally up to you. But I just want you to know that um, we do need to start at 2.30. Okay. Um, so, and it's almost 1.30. Oh. Uh, depending on what people do. Uh, looks like people are leaving. I'm, 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 I'm going to get some food. Okay, let's close and we'll come back and be. Anybody wants to say you can stay, but you can, you can shut that.